This is Allagash White, the defending champion of the white ale tasting, today competing against two Belgian counterparts and one from Canada. Let's see what happens. All right, my four chalices of the day. Right out of the gate, this is the inverse of the American White Ale tasting. If you guys haven't seen that one, we'll link it down below. Essential watching before this one. Unlike the American White Ale tasting, this time we have one example that appears very orange, and we have three that appear very yellow, which is the exact inverse of the American Ale tasting. I'm not gonna waste any time getting into it. I'm gonna try sample A on your left, my right, right out of the gate. Oh yeah, right away I feel like I'm in for more of a treat than that American ale tasting. More phenolic on the nose, more bright. Doesn't smell super sweet, smells actually kind of dry. You know, smelling something that smells dry might sound funny, but to me it, it doesn't have like an affect that sticks to your nostrils. It's kind of ephemeral and sharp. And that is an indicator to me that something's going to taste dry. A little bit of, pretty strong on the coriander on the nose on this example. A little bit of citrus, very peppery, very complex, very nice on sample A. Wow. Very spicy, almost cola-like. Very strong on the spice, very strong on the spice. I don't know if I like that. Moving on to sample B. Appearance-wise, this one is just not very appealing. When I'm thinking about a white ale, I'm thinking, you know, yellow and fluffy, a little bit hazy in appearance. This guy's pretty orange and pretty clear. Doesn't appear super uh, tasty, at least from the appearance. Not bad on the aroma. Peppery like the first example. Definitely getting hints of citrus. Smells a little more caramelly, a little more sweet than the first example. Pretty mild on the flavor. Honestly, like any oxidative notes that I was picking up on the nose aren't really coming through on the flavor. There's actually a reasonable amount of hop bitterness there on the finish that I quite like, but there's a sweetness that lingers on my palate that kind of kind of negates the kind of crispness that I'm hoping for in a beer like this. Moving on to sample C. Great color, light yellow, perfect haziness. Really nice fermentation character. Really, really phenolic and bright and citrusy. Oh, that's good. Citrus, coriander in perfect balance. Dry, crushable. Really fresh tasting, really bright. Great example, sample C. Moving on today to our final example in the panel. Whoa, strong fermentation character, funky almost. Yes, I like it. This just smells like something that's, um, it's like eating the grizzle in a seasoned pan. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it has a real mature depth and complexity to it. Flavors, flavor doesn't really match the aroma kind of disjointed, not really melded like this. Little bit of honeyed sweetness, like candied sweetness almost. Too much sweetness. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, it has that, it has that uh, sort of like orange candy sweetness. The, the mouthfeel is a little bit slick, a little bit saccharin. The flavor is really nice. The spice and the, the citrus are a nice balance but I wish it was a little bit more dry. All right, so as I so often do before I pick a favorite, I'm gonna go through samples A through D one more time, and then I'm gonna rank them one through four. This is fascinating flavor profile. I don't know that I've ever had this. Getting like honey candy coming through. Wow, it's like a polar opposite to the first time I smelled it. Very sweet on the aroma. Honey, honey, honey. Wow, complex. Fascinating flavor profile. Super interesting, super clean. Nothing to dislike about it. Just very, very different from 
what I'd normally expect from this style of beer, at least that I've consumed personally in the past. Sample B. Yeah, kind of nondescript flavor profile. When it finishes, it falls really flat. None of the spice character, none of the citrus kind of lingers on the palate. It just kind of disappears, which I don't particularly care for. Uh, so yeah, back into sample C. Bright, hoppy, citrusy, coriander, spice and perfect balance. Really, really enjoy sample C. Moving on to the final sample in the panel. A lot of citrus coming through on the second pass. A lot of citrus coming through on the second pass in sample D. Really, really quite nice. All right, so this is definitely an example of a tasting where it's not clear to me which one's my favorite. Samples A and D are reasonably similar, especially as they've allowed to sit in the glass. All right, I'm gonna go, sample C is my number one. Sample D is my number two. Primarily because it just has more depth. It's interesting and complex and it changes and evolves. There's a lot going on. Drinks really nicely. More of a challenging flavor profile, but I like it. Splitting hairs, sample A would be my number three and uh, sample B would be my number four in the second great white ale tasting. Michael, my man, what are we drinking? Four. Four. Awesome. Unibrow. This is out of uh, Quebec. Yeah, awesome. So you're going through, you're going four, three, two, one. Three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, authentic example, product of Belgium, classic white ale, great can, St. Bernardus. Look at that. Awesome brewery. It tasted great, tasted awesome. So now I'm gonna give you your number one. Okay, the winner of the Great White Ale Tasting Part Two. A.W. Just absolutely slaying the competition once again. Allagash White. Number two. Hogarden. Yeah, this was good. They were all good. Man, splitting hairs. I, I have to wonder, let's do the thing. We don't usually do the thing. Freshness probably plays a part in this. I didn't pick up a ton of oxidative character in samples A and D, but that said, you're probably closer to the source with Allagash. This says it was packaged in May, June, July, August. This is three months old right now. The Hoe Garden says fresh before uh, 12, 23, 24. I don't know what their best buy date is. It could be six months. If it's six months, this guy's with packaged within the last month or two. If it's 12 months, this could be about six months old. Uh, the Unibrow does no, oh, here we go. Best Buy 12, 11, 25. So it's really hard to say here in the middle of 24 when this was packaged. And interesting that it has such a long expiration because I thought it was already tasting a little bit oxidized. It was bottle re-fermented, which is typically good for oxidation. And then the St. Bernardus was packaged, who knows? I don't know. Uh, one, three, four, seven, one, five, something, something, something. So it's hard to say if freshness played a part. Any of these examples of white ale in your glass, you're likely to have a good time. Congratulations to Allagash for winning the second tasting in a row. Maybe there's some more beers out there we can pit it against. Hitachio's Nest, I think we couldn't find the Omegang Hennepin. Uh, again, we find what we can find at our local store and we, we struck out on Hennepin. So we're going to keep trying and maybe we'll have a part three and see if anybody can dethrone the Allagash. Get subscribed, guys. Leave us your thoughts down below. See you next time.